I've just pulled him away from hundreds of people who are trying to talk to him, take pictures with him. Yami, are you ready to be the 42nd mayor of Colorado Springs? I was ready. Taylor, I've been here since 10 a.m. this morning, and before we even found out there were human remains inside this funeral home, you could just smell it in the air. At this space right here was Gonzalez's bedroom. As you can see right here, this is actually her bed that still lies on the ground today. Salida is a town that has a population of just under 6,000 people. So while this case of Suzanne Morphew got national and even world attention, the emotions here in Salida run deeper than words can describe. The prosecutor and both of Gannon's parents gave a reaction to today's verdict. Now it is a cold and snowy election day. Got those in and so we have about half an hour left. Get your ballots in. These ballot boxes will close at 7 p.m. And with that, we'll send it back. Reporting live in Colorado Springs, Rhea Ja, Fox 21 News. Would you buy a house covered floor to ceiling in faux fur? Or with a 20 foot swing in the middle of the living room. For people driving northbound on I 25, what once was a nostalgic Sunbird restaurant sign that they would see every day is now no more. When you're out at the grocery store, you can now buy a bottle of red wine with your steak. No more left turns under General Palmer's watch. If you're traveling east or westbound on Platte, Flipping through these records and finding that one is the magical experience employees here. If you own a phone, chances are you've received one of these. But what many people don't know is that most spam calls are against the law. He walked on this stage as Yemi Mobilade and walked off as the 42nd mayor of Colorado Springs. He says he is ready to go to work. The Fremont County Sheriff's Office says they do not have the budget to do animal impounds anymore. Meanwhile, the Humane Society says they can't take in impounds without their funding. The city showed up in full force for today's Pikes Peak Pride Parade, the first pride since the Club Q mass shooting in November. Richard Fierro, one of the individuals who tackled the gunman, led the parade as Grand Marshal. Fox 21's Rija caught up with Fierro ahead of the parade to find out what this meant for him and the community. The city of Colorado Springs went all out on Sunday morning for this year's Pikes Peak Pride Parade. People here are loud and proud. This Pride Parade is seeing one of the biggest turnouts in the city's history with an estimate of over 15,000 people lining the streets. Happy Pride, everybody! Earlier that morning, Richard Fierro, the local brewery owner and Army veteran who tackled the Club Q shooter, decorated his car, preparing to lead the parade as Grand Marshal. Heroic acts are, are things that were un, un, unexplained, un, unforeseen, just something he had to do. This pride bears the weight of being the first to follow the Club Q mass shooting that devastated the city just seven months prior. The November massacre left five people dead, including Raymond Green Vance, the boyfriend of of Fierro's daughter. We're here to celebrate his life and celebrate his memory, and, and that's kind of what we're going to do today. You know, I'm not gay or lesbian, so it's really cool that they opened their arms to me and, and welcomed me into their, into their community. Even though Fierro is not part of the LGBTQ plus community, survivors look to him as a protector of their community. Because without him, who knows how many other lives could have been taken. I'm happy that we're able to celebrate pride even though we went through such a tragedy. A celebration, but also a remembrance. Family members of the Club Q shooting victims appreciating the duality of this event. It's just a good, a good feeling to be out here and to bond with, with uh, the families and the victims more. Pride here in Colorado Springs was always kind of small. And this year it's really big and I think it'll stay that way from now on. The community now hoping to keep the energy going for years to come. If this is the biggest turnout we've had this year, then maybe double it next year because Pride is a celebration, Pride is a riot. So here we are together in community. Let's keep it growing. Reporting in Colorado Springs, Rhea Ja, Fox 21 News. First on Fox 21, what once was a call to action, justice for Gannon, is now a reality for the 11-year-old boy's mother and father. Yesterday afternoon when Leticia Stack was found guilty of murdering Gannon, his parents got to walk out of the courthouse with a feeling that they can finally move on with their lives. But 
What does that next chapter look like? Fox 21's Rhea Jaw sat down with Gannon's parents one on one to find out what the future looks like for them. Scott Taylor, they said yesterday the weight that had been on their shoulders for three years had finally been lifted off and they walked out of the El Paso County Courthouse to a rainbow beaming across the sky and both of Gannon's parents who are both religious saw this as an act of God and a sign from their beloved son from heaven. That rainbow going across the courthouse yesterday, what did that mean to you to see that? It was a promise that has been fulfilled. Um, I prayed countless hours and to walk out and you see that it's just a reminder that hey you are real I am here with you. Three grueling years after their son was killed and five weeks of a trial that many would call a parent's absolute worst nightmare. <laughs> Landon Bullard and Al Stauk walks out of the El Paso County Courthouse for the final time. By the grace of God we got the verdict we were hoping for and that uh Justice has been done. On Monday, Letitia Stauk was sentenced to life in prison for the murder of her 11-year-old stepson, Gannon Stauk. And now that justice has been served, his parents are going home. I would have never imagined the hospitality of a community. I've seen grown men and women cry. I have never met my son. <laughs> We've created a family here. During the sentencing, Al Stauk asked the judge for no restitution and for Letitia to be stripped of his last name. It's nauseating and infuriating to hear her called Miss Stauk this past three years. They want to move forward without her. My losses are well into the six figures, but I would, and this is maybe my stubbornness, but I would rather pay every cent of those losses back then be connected with her. They now turn inwards to focus on their families. Gannon's sister, Lena, who was just eight years old when he was murdered, continues to keep the memory of him alive. We went and watched Mario the other day, and she said, let's save a seat for Bubba. So we saved a seat for Gannon, and um, he, he calls her buggy butt cheeks. And um, she'll, she'll say, do you remember mommy when he would call, he would call me bubby, buddy butt cheeks? Bullard said she wants to commemorate her son through service with the Justice for Gannon Foundation. She is pushing for legislation and hopes to create a fund for missing children and their families. Her message to parents now is to not forget about the little things. Give them a kiss goodnight on the cheek and just let them know how much you love them or go back to writing a note, sticking it in their lunchbox. And I have a letter that I hold on to is one of the last ones that Gannon wrote me. And it was actually stuck in my car, in my armrest. And it, it said, Dear Mommy, I love you. You're the most awesomest mommy I know. And um, I still have that. Reporting in Colorado Springs, Rhea Ja, Fox 21 News. I've been like the background music of my existence. the movie of my life. They've been with me on my journey. A journey that will soon be coming to an end. From its humble beginnings as a thriving chain in Colorado with vibrant outposts from Pueblo to Denver. It was a multi-million dollar business, especially in the early days. We lost count of how many people were coming in and it was total chaos, but it was beautiful. Now surviving as the last location in the state, Independent Records has united hearts through the universal language of music. I've known people who met here and, and got married eventually and been a staple of the community. Independent Records announced the official closure of their last store. Since then, loyal customers who grew up browsing the aisles have shown up in tears. My mom took me here to get a CD, my first CD. I seek comfort here. I'm going through stuff and the first thing I had to do was drive here. It's a sense of community that we lose when we talk about losing an establishment like Independent Records. For Matt Garung, the Vinyl Haven became more than just a store. Yeah, this one I've had my eye on. It has been the soundtrack of his life. I've worked here since October of 98. My first album was Wham! Make It Big. I bought that at the Downtown Independent Records on Bijou across from Acacia Park. That was 1985, and I would have been uh, 12 years old. I've applied at some places. It's been kind of a, a half-hearted effort because I don't want to not do this anymore. After moving three times in Colorado Springs, employees say this last move was the store's downfall. We just really haven't been able to, to gain that traction back. 
Flipping through these records and finding that one is the magical experience employees here say that you just can't get online. It's exhilarating for sure. It's like a, it's a journey that can lead you on other destinations, not even the one you're originally on. This Sunday will be Independent Records 45th birthday. <laughs> and employees can't bear to watch their store go without a fight. A GoFundMe has been set up in hopes of raising enough money to save the store. I have to do whatever I can. I have to leave no stone unturned. And if the answer is still no, and this has to close at some point, I know that I did make everything I could. The bittersweet notes of closure filling the air as the record scratches one final time. Be independent. Reporting in Colorado Springs, Rhea Jaw, Fox 21 News.